we are starting a brand new series called How You Can Hear God. And today specifically, we're talking about hearing God when you're going to church. But I know that a lot of people left church there during the year 2020 because of all the foolishness. But today we're going to talk about how you can hear God by going to church. Welcome back to another episode of the You, Me, and Jesus podcast. I'm excited today because we are starting a brand new series called How to Hear God. Uh, we've got a four-part series because we got four weeks in June. And so we're going to start this journey of like teaching you how to be able to hear God. Um, I will say that I am actually working on in my first digital course for You, Me, and Jesus because you guys have been asking me for years uh, to create something on how to hear the voice of God. And so I am going to be working on that this month. Uh, but also, I need you to know that I am a little bit under the weather. So my voice probably sounds a little bit off. And the entire time you're going to hear me go, because I have congestion and all the things. I had quite the fever uh, last night, but I've, I've taken a turn today. Um, and I didn't want to, um, I didn't want to delay this because it, it, otherwise it wouldn't get out on, on the today when you're hearing this. So you guys can just pray for me and my healing and all the things. But hopefully by the time you hear this, that I am feeling much better. But anyway, as we start this series of talking about how to hear God, the first way that I really wanted to talk to you, I wanted to share with you is that like, you know, there are obviously so many ways that you could be able to hear God, right? Like if I told you some of the processes that I have been going through um, to be able to hear God, you would be like, what? Because like God speaks in so many different ways and I have been you know, I don't know everything. I don't know him like I know myself, you know, or whatever. And so I've been on this journey of just being like, okay, like, how do I hear you like this? And how do I hear you like that? And one of the ways um, that I have learned that you can hear God is by going to church. Okay. And so let's just have a conversation about going to church. So here's what I think about as it pertains to going to church. And, you know, I always like, I love being able to just go on Google and just search a thing up real quick that you we all can like search together. So you're going to hear me go on Google and do a quick search or whatever. But here's what I think about going to church. So when I think about going to church, I think like, um, first of all, it is other believers, right? So I love everybody, right? I don't care if you love Jesus, don't love Jesus. If you're a Satanist, I don't care. I love everybody and Jesus loves everybody. You know what I mean? And so I'm not one that I only can hang out with Christians. That's just not me. I'm just, that's just not how I roll. You know what I mean? But I am someone who needs to be around people that are like me as well. You know, like I always teach, you know, my clients, you know, in business that like, it's important for them to have their normal, their regular friends, their BFFs and all that, but that they also have to have entrepreneur friends that are on the journey that they're on because when they're on that same journey, there's, there's an appreciation, there's an understanding, there's all these different, these facets or whatever. And so when I think about going to church, it's like, here is this space where I can be fully myself or whatever. So like when I am an online entrepreneur, I can be the online entrepreneur me, right? When I am speaking on you, me and Jesus, I can speak hundred percent into what I believe with God and all that type of stuff. And then when I go to church, I can be fully Christian or whatever. I'm not saying that I can't be all of that where I am. I'm just saying that when you're in different spaces, you're just different, right? So if I'm in a space where nobody has an animal, there's like, there's just conversations that I'm just not having about my cats. You know what I mean? But if I go into a space and everybody has cats, oh my God, we're showing pictures, we're changing stories, we're getting tips. It's just a different thing that happens. So when I think about going to church is it, it becomes this, this space for us to be able to um, be with other believers who believe God, who trust God, who are on this journey with God and all the things, you know, that's like, I am, uh, I go to like a, um, every six weeks I go to what's called a business accelerator at my church, Jesus culture. And it is all people that have a business or are in some form of business and love Jesus. Right. And so when we're getting strategies for our business, it's all about talking to God and hearing God and collaborating and things of that nature in that particular way. You know what I mean? And so when I think about going to church and being able to hear God, it's because like, you know, we, 
we hear God according to however we hear him, right? Uh, but then there's sometimes, there's sometimes where we have been praying about a thing or thinking about a thing or whatever. We don't even know that God is on our, he's on our radar for something. And then we go into church, right? And one, you may just encounter somebody who has a relationship with God, who God has been talking to about you right? In a good way or whatever. And then they see you and they go, oh my God, I've been meaning to talk to you. Like God, I had a dream about you and God told me that. Da, da, da. And you may be like, what? Like, here's this thing you've been praying for and answer for. And sometimes God will give it to a person that has no idea why they hear what they hear or what they heard, what they heard. They have no idea. You know, like there was this girl at my church and I just kept feeling like God wanted me to pray for her. And I was just like, no, she's on staff. She doesn't need prayer, whatever, whatever. And then finally one day she came up to me and she hugged me and I immediately almost fell to the floor because I'm I'm a I'm a feeler. So I feel God's presence and sometimes it just it just does different things to me. And so I was just like, for me, that was my confirmation of when she comes back, pray for her. And so then when she comes back, I go up to her and I said, Hey, for the last couple of weeks, God told me to pray for you. What do you need prayer for? And she just said something, not not nothing big. And as I started praying, I started hearing other things and I just start praying for her, right? And, you know, it, it encouraged her, but it also encouraged me and my ability to hear God or what have you, you know, also there have been times when like, when I am in need, you know, like I've gone through a lot of different painful things, uh, over the last 10 years, a lot of really painful things that have really, really messed with my faith a lot, right? Like a lot, like to the point to where something had happened recently and I went to pray for a person and what I used to say is, oh, I've got faith for that right? Because I've always been the person of faith for this particular thing. And I didn't say it because I didn't have the faith for it the way that I used to. And I felt that and I was like, oh man, I remember when I had faith for that, but I didn't have it in that moment. And also there was a time when a couple months ago where I was dealing with bladder stones and kidney stones. Now my doctors could not figure out what was going on with me, right? They just couldn't figure it out. And I heard God tell me, you have a stone, you have a kidney stone, a bladder stone or a kidney stone, or whatever. And I'm going through this process and I'm in excruciating pain for two and a half months. I mean, it was really, 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 really bad. And I wasn't talking about it on social media. And I went to church one Sunday and I was just so, I was just, what's the word for? I was so angry. I was so, I just didn't have anything to give. And somebody came up to me and was like, Hey girl, how you doing? And I was like, actually, I'm not doing very well. And she goes, why? What's going on? And so I'm telling her about, you know, something totally unrelated. Cause I, cause I had multiple things going on and she said, Oh no, we're going to pray for that. You know? And so then she like, she prays for me. And then she says after service that she was going to gather up a bunch of women to come pray for me. Well, somebody came up to me during service and started praying. And then after service, they had me there for like an hour just praying all this stuff, right? Unrelated to the thing that was causing me pain, something totally different that was pretty big in my life health-wise. And a couple of days after they prayed, I passed the kidney stone. I mean, it was painful, but I passed it. And before I ever could get into the final doctor's visit, I passed it. And it was like, here's what I got, you know, by going to church or whatever. And, you know, I knew that God was telling me that I had the stone, but it was like, nothing was confirmed. But, you know, TMI, I caught one of them. So I was able to bring it to the doctor and say, here, you know? Um, and so I hear, I heard God that way. Now, when I think about the, the average believer is it's like, we just need the fellowship, you know, we really need the fellowship of being with people. Uh, but also like when you're in this space where they are 100% focused on God, Jesus and the Holy spirit. Like you're not focused on work. You're not focused on the kids, your husband, your wife. You're just focused on God. You are able to hear God in a way that is like no other, right? You are able to hear God in a way that is like no other because you are 100% focused on him. I have had moments in church where I have heard some things so powerfully that I had to stop what I was doing, grab my phone to write down what I just got right? So that I didn't lose it. And it was the most amazing things. I've got the most amazing business and marketing strategies in church. You know, like I've got the most encouragement in church, you know, 
one Sunday I was praying and worshiping and all that. And this man walks up behind me and says, I just hear God say, get ready. And I was like, what? He's like, God just says, get ready. And he was like, I have no idea what it means. He goes, but it's really big and get ready. And I said, okay. And I have no idea what that means, but it was like, I had just asked God that morning. Cause I was, I would, I needed, you know, and I just said, God, I need encouragement. I encourage everybody else. I need some encouragement. And he said, okay. I said, can you give me a word today at church? Send somebody that has no idea what is going on. And can somebody give me a word of encouragement? And he said, yes. And that guy came a couple hours later and just said, God said, get ready. I don't know what it means, but God said, get ready. And I said, okay, you know, but then also I had this time where I live where I live right now and I wanted to live closer into the city of San Diego. And I was just kind of praying about moving. And he said, yes, move. And I couldn't figure out what part of town to go to because I'm still new here. And I was just leaving church one Sunday and I was talking to this couple and we were talking about something, me moving or whatever. And then they just said this particular area. And then I just felt this nudge in my spirit. It just like, it just hit me. And I was just like, what is that? And God was just like, listen to that, write that down. And so that next Sunday, no, that same Sunday, I was like, well, let me just see what apartments are around this area where our church is. And I looked up on this apartment complex, which just happened to be open on a Sunday, went to it. And I was just like, oh my God, this is an amazing apartment complex, even better than the one that I currently live in. And when I went to go get the lease, they were like, well, we have this, the, the smallest two bedroom and it's 1200 square feet, which is 200 more square feet than what I currently have. And she said, and it's actually on special. It is $1,400 a month less than what I currently pay. Much better in the city, much bigger and $1,400 a month less. I was like, what? <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's like, this is, this is God, like doing what it is that he does. You know what I mean? And we just get this awesome opportunity to like be in the house, be with people who love him, who want to love us. You know, um, I also know that there's been so many times where I feel like, um, I just, I just need, um, I just need encouragement about who I am. I just need encouragement in like that I'm going in the right direction with me and that like all these different things or whatever. And I'll just come into the house and as I'll just encounter somebody or I'll just have this like warm encounter with the Holy Spirit. Like I remember one time I was in church. I think I was in church and I was doing something. I was praying or something and I went to pray and I just felt this nudge. just say, wait, don't do, don't move. And I was just like, okay, don't move. And I didn't move. And I just felt the Holy Spirit just come so softly, so gently. And I was just, and I just stood there and I was just like, wow, I don't know what's happening, but thank you for being here. You know? And it was like, cause I, I don't get hugs, right? Like I work for myself. I work from home. I don't get these loving full hug embraces from like a mom or dad, a kid, a friend, a uh, husband, a boyfriend. I don't get those things, you know? And I remember um, after I had gone through a divorce, it took me uh, probably five or six years before anybody hugged me. And I remember the first time I got hugged after not being touched for like six years and I about broke down, you know? And when you are in church, like you get these touches, like I got this Holy Spirit type of touch, you know, and I just get these comfort things. I get these knowings. I get these strategies. I get this wisdom. I get, you know, all these different things from being able to hear God in church because the pastor and the people of the church, they're doing their best. They're human, but they're doing their best to create this environment that is so warm and so welcoming to the Holy Spirit. You know, I remember this past Sunday, I'm on prayer team and it was my time up and they were like, you know, if you, I can't remember what the altar call was for, but it was like a bunch of people just kind of came up before the prayer team ever came up. Like everybody could just go up and everybody was just, you know, there with God. And they were like, okay, prayer team, y'all can just go around praying for people. And I was like, okay. I just kind of went around praying for people and I'm not thinking anything of it. I'm just, I'm not feeling anything. I'm just touching people. And then I went up to this girl and I just kind of put my arm around her and she put her arm around me. And then we just, we both start feeling the presence of the Holy spirit. And then suddenly I start, I start getting this picture of her stomach and I'm just like, uh, we don't really touch people unless, you know, they say touch me. And I was just like, I just felt like I was supposed to touch her stomach. And so I just touched her stomach. And when I touched her stomach, 
my God, she was falling over and I uncontrollably was just blowing wind, just blowing, blowing, blowing wind, right? And for me, I was like, I didn't know what was happening. I didn't know what was happening to me, didn't know what was happening to her, but I just kept doing it. And then we got on down to the ground and I just kept just being there. And for me, I was like, I have this thing where I say, God touches me first and then he touches other people. So she's getting touched, but I'm getting touched first. I'm getting all of God and she's getting touched too. Right. And for me, it was like, God was just like loving on me and just healing me and restoring me while I was praying for this person. Right. So if you are somebody and you want to be able to hear God, one of the ways to hear God is to be in fellowship with church is to be at a church that welcomes God, Jesus, and the Holy spirit to just speak to you, to talk to you, to encourage you, to love on you and all the things you can't be away from it. Now, if you are finding yourself, you are, you know, maybe connected to a church and you don't really enjoy being at that church or what have you or whatever, then it's really important to understand that like, maybe that's not the place where you're supposed to be at. Right. Maybe that. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Connected to a church and you don't really. Maybe connected to a church and you don't really. and you don't really enjoy the church anymore, then maybe it's time to have a conversation with God privately about where you should actually be because you do need to be in a place of of fellowship with believers. Cause like, this is a very interesting world that we live in and we do need to be connected to other believers and you need to be able to be in a safe place to just hear God in addition to your house and whatever. Right. Because I guarantee you that my the life that I have right now in terms of the peace and the the relationship with God, it would not be this way if I was not attending a church. Okay. So, uh, so that's it for this this first episode about how to hear God. Um, If you are interested in taking our course, I would love to hear from you. Uh, If you wouldn't mind, just send me a message on Instagram at Kia Kelly and let me know that you will be interested in taking a course. I haven't done a survey yet, um, but I will. So if you're listening to this and you're like, Yes, I want to be able to learn how to hear God. Send me a message on Instagram at Kia Kelly. I would love to know and I would love to create a course just for you.